Dear reader, welcome here. You're about to listen to The Gambia's first audiobook by West African writer and scholar M. L. So. The Memories of Reflection by Modo Lamin H. Al Musaf So was approved by the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education of the Gambia, MOBSI, in 2014 to be used in junior schools as a supplementary reading material. Modo Lamin A. Jalmasaf So is the author of four books, and counting. Celebrating 15 years of record-breaking bestsellers in Gambian literature. Stay in touch for film and TV news. Book releases and more, follow the author on Facebook and Twitter. Copyright Modo Lamin So 2013-2019 Fiction. First published 2013. This edition published 2019. All rights reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted, in any form or by means, electronic, mechanical, photocopying, recording, or otherwise, without the permission of the author. ISBN 978-9983-98-597-2 The pictures illustrated in the book are all drawn by the author, except in Chapter 3, which is an extract from a new practical English book. Table of Content Dedication The Rumor The Only Fish in the River The Town Girl The Beauty Pageant The Death of Isitu Notes Glossary This book is wholeheartedly dedicated to Mr. Lamin Kaba Bajo and his entire family for the support and advice. The author's heartfelt and warmest selflessness goes to Mob C, Unique Graphics, National Center for Arts and Culture, the Writers' Association of the Gambia, Youth Empowerment Project Gambia, the International Organization for Migration Gambia Office, for all their unending support and encouragement which served as the author's strength to have this book published. Preface. The book is specifically tailored to preach the virtue of tolerance in society. Besides, it emphasizes that excellence without morality could result in an unavoidable mysteries and problems in life. Despite her excellent academic record Isitu allows ungratefulness, lack of proper guidance and counseling ruin her life. Her failure to reward the excellent service offered to her by Bar Caddy exposes her to vulnerabilities in life. Her desire for fashion and her inability to act without thinking led to her humiliation and disgrace she faced in the later part of her life. Isitu's mother Fatumata could be said to have started all the problems. Isitu's uncontrollable love for money makes her a spoiled child who never sticks to one man unlike her mother, who throws her into the river. People must learn to be tolerant and act sensibly so as to avoid the costly consequences in life. Teenage pregnancy, early marriage, premarital sex and abortions are not what young people should practice, instead the books should be their friends, if the dream to be good citizens is to be realized. Anything contrary to being hardworking and focused as a young student could result in disasters. Bad as the vices of teenage pregnancy and the resultant effects are, one must act with consciousness if they are faced with such problems. Questions are drawn from each chapter in the book in order to test the understanding of students and readers. In the following story of adversity, the author has imagined as this story might have happened 3,360 moons ago, although existing place names figured in the book, the characters and some events described are all entirely realistic. The book is purely fiction, therefore any resemblance to any person dead or alive is coincidental. The Memories of Reflection is carefully prepared to provide students and readers with the basic knowledge of reading and understanding, as well as nurturing the cultural and behavioral aspect of Gambian society. As the Mandingo proverb says, Nina Laka Nina Jo Berry Manair Buka Nina Jo, meaning goodness rewards goodness but evil does not reward goodness. To add sympathy to pain and stress, a noble lady, Fatumata, whose boyfriend Musa rejected her pregnancy, throws her baby, Isitu, into the river. Isitu is adopted and educated by an old woman named Barkadi, who needed a child. Her husband died a long time ago. Despite the tender care Isitu receives under Barkadi, she abandons her for her lover and never bothers to pay her a visit not even for a single day. 
Sadly, Isatu falls in love and gets married to a rich young entrepreneur called Famara, not knowing that he is her biological brother. The book is also designed to show the importance of the principal aspects of tolerance to life in a thematic way. It does not only seek to give a narrative account, nor does it attempt to rely only on an imagination and summing up our ancient and modern customs specifically on the Gambia, though that is a very important theme. It is also necessary to identify and describe other significant factors which work to destroy the structure of the two lovers, as those that culminated from a family pressure discouraging Famara from loving Isitu. The later part of the book describes how the general uneasiness and some anxieties induced by family prestige and pride result in ruining the life of Isitu, who could have been a responsible person but was instead reduced to nothing. However, the unfairness of Isitu concentrates on the evil side of human experience, in particular the inhuman social consequences within herself, as Barkadi, her adopted mother, discovers happiness by helping others less fortunate than her. About the book. A noble lady, Fatumata, whose boyfriend, Musa, rejected her pregnancy, throws her baby Isatu into the river. Isatu is adopted and educated by an old woman, Barkadi, who needed a child. Her husband died many years ago. Despite the care Isatu has received under Barkadi, she abandons her for her lover, and never bothers to pay her a visit even for a single day. Sadly, Isatu falls in love and gets married to a rich young entrepreneur called Famara, not knowing that he is her biological brother. What people are saying about the book. The Memories of Reflection is full of emotional metaphor and literary illusion, by Anna Johnson, Ohio, USA. Modo is the new voice of Gambian literature, by Liza Hay, UK. His gripping plots and proverbs are entirely original. Intensely readable by Falila Ali, Niame, Niger. An extraordinarily powerful piece of family drama, Emmanuel Odom, Ghana. It deals with drug trafficking, corruption, morality, family prestige and pride, love, patriotism, teenage pregnancy and materialism. About the author. Modo Lamin So is an emerging West African writer and scholar. He was born on 7 January 1990 in Bacow Newtown, the Gambia. He moved to Brakama with his parents at the age of five. Modo Lamin So is an award-winning young Gambian writer who is well known by his pen name Modo Lamin A. Jalmasaf So. He is a renowned playwright, a poet, teacher librarian, a novelist, a blogger and short story writer. So founded the Young Writers Association of the Gambia, and is the Secretary General of the Writers Association of the Gambia, WAG. Some proverbs in the book. If you want to listen to the voice of the market, you will never buy, a proverb coined by the author meaning if you want to listen to people you will not be able to do anything for yourself. Not all teeth that are whiter with the intention to chew a white cola nut, some prefer the red one, a proverb coined by the author meaning not all people having smiling face mean to be who they are. If the eye cannot see what the heart encounters, the mind knows best, a proverb by the author meaning a person's action is judged by his, her deeds he intended. A golden plate polished by God shall not be rust in the presence of a galvanizer, a proverb by the author meaning what God has decided that will happen, no one can stop it from happening. When the foot of the singer is on the drum, would the dancers dance? Let them go and ask the flute player who composed the tune, a proverb by the author meaning the secret of certain things in life are only meant to be exposed by something. If all meats were like a kidney, then knives would not have ways to pass through them, a proverb by the author meaning that if you treat someone's child like your own, someone else will also treat yours with goodness. Human is mistake and too much of it is caused by the devil, a proverb by the author meaning all human beings are fallible but too much of their mistakes is caused by the devil. Now get ready to listen to the book. Chapter 1, The Rumor. Many years ago, in the days when the Gambia had a name without a surname, there lived a wealthy man. He was so rich that he grew bored. He bought everything that money could buy and many things more, besides, he was bored with swimming in his swimming pool of gold and diamonds. 
He was commonly known as the richest man in the town of Sukuta, and had a family of six. He was so honored that even the clouds seemed to have smiled at his shadow, his name. Ebrahima, a father to Fatumata and husband to Amanetta. Their first child, Fatumata, was so beautiful that the stars shone in her eyes, that even the moon seemed to have smiled at her lips and the sun burnt from her face. Everyone liked Fatumata and she knew that she was the happiest girl in the world. There was nothing she would ask for which her parents would not grant her. She was so pampered right from her childhood that she was made a queen among her peers. But as the saying goes, a flattering mouth works ruin, and, a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. So when the news flooded the streets that she had an egg in her oven, she angered her father, insofar as, a rich man is wise in his own way, but the poor who has understanding searched him out. Her father with his fame, respect and dignity, decided to send her to a small village in the west coast region of the Gambia, called Sibano, so as to settle the dust that the wind had blown in his home. Two days later, Fatumata darkened the door of Musa her lover in Basumbala. During their discussion, she told Musa that she was pregnant for him. Suddenly, Musa gave her a big slap in the face and said, go and look for the person responsible. How can I be a father of a love child? He barked at her. Fatumata looked at him with love in her eyes, trying to construct a sentence, and then, they heard a knock at the door. Who is within? said Musa. Gibral replied. It's me. When I was at the gate, I heard you barking like a mad dog, what's going on? Can you imagine Fatumata wanted to make me responsible for her pregnancy? How on earth can you deny this plain fact? Gibral responded sarcastically. Everybody in this town knows you have an affair with her, or, have you forgotten what she did for you? She took you to America and made you who you are today. Please try to reason appropriately. Then Musa angrily said, do you want to know the copper and the wood I am made up? Today you will all know that I am the lion who is the mightiest among all the beasts and does not turn away from any. He brought a cutlass and drove them away. A week later, Fatumata was forced to go to Sibano in order to prevent the shame she could cause to her parents, if people knew that she was pregnant. On 24 July 1990, she boarded a minibus and went to Sibano. She became lovelorn and lovesick. She had encountered many heartbreaks and disappointments as a young beautiful lady, she was just unfortunate that she had everything in life except love. Ten months later, she gave birth to a daughter. She called Musa to inform him about it. He ignored her calls and switched off his phone. Fatumata became outrageous and uncomfortable, as hatred lifted her from the compound to the Bintang Bolorong, where she threw her baby in the river. She returned to Sukuta after four years and she got married to Fode, a Gambian based in France. After two years of their marriage, they had a son and named him Kalamali. The natives of Sukuta gossiped about Fatumata's first pregnancy without seeing her give birth. This worried many people. As to a hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. She divorced Fode and got married to Suleiman, a Gambian entrepreneur based in the United States of America. Upon knowing that Fatumata did this because Suleiman was wealthier than him, Fode angrily took his son from her, and kept a distance away from her. Fatumata, being a member of the Juola ethnic group, was very determined and if she set her eye on something, she must make sure that she definitely got it. As a result, she appended a mark on the body of her children so that she could easily identify them. She traveled to America on holiday with her husband Suleiman in order to make both ends meet. She was called by Jibril only to be informed that she had lost both parents in a car accident. One week later, she came to attend the funeral of her late parents and met with Saini, with whom she stayed with while in Sabanore. Saini asked her about her child whose pregnancy she was carrying during her stay in Sabanore. Fatumata looked at her, as tears flowed from her eyes and her mind reflected on her first child whom she threw into the river. This is the end of chapter 1.
For a continuation of this book, please grab a copy at Timbuktu Bookshop, or call the author on 720-4117. Send the author an email to modulemenso1 at hotmail.com. Thank you.